The Collins Cup returned in 2022 and with it came the finest triathletes in three teams battling it out across 12 head-to-head matchups. And doing so, the winner would be lifting one of the most coveted trophies there is, the Collins Cup. The question though on everybody's lips coming into this year's event is would Team US and Team International have enough to overtake Team Europe, who arrived as hosts, as favourites, and of course, as defending champions. It is a triathlon event like no other, and this year, it certainly didn't disappoint. And this is where the story unfolded. The wonderful ex-Bionic Sphere in Chamarine, chosen once again as the venue to host the Collins Cup. But before we get to the action, here's a brief explanation of how the competition works, as told by the experts. Three teams. Team Europe. Team US. Team International. Where is it? There. <laughs> 12 races. One athlete from each team battling it out for points. <laughs> the winner of each race gets three points. Two points for second. And one point for third. There are bonus points too for margin of victory. <laughs> that was extremely difficult. <laughs> Half a point each for each of the two minutes that you beat your competitors by. And I'm learning stuff too. <laughs> The team with the most points will be the winner of this year's Collins Cup. Team US, baby. Team Europe, duh. I mean, no, no. no. I, I, I might hunt them down, we will see. <laughs> And this is how they lined up. No shortage of mouth-watering matchups to look forward to as we approach the first race. For the women, watch out for fireworks in matchup five. Europe's Holly Lawrence once again paired with Ellie Salthouse in their much anticipated rematch. While in the men's draw, all eyes were firmly fixed on race eight and the clash between the two Sams, long and laid low. And let's get straight into the action. Well, they are off, and I'm not sure if you noticed there, but wetsuits, it was a question leading into it whether or not, in fact, they were going to be wearing wetsuits, but cooled down overnight, and uh, who's that going to favor? Well, I think it might favor Daniela over everybody, to be honest. I mean, we've seen Flora go straight to the front here, but that's not a big surprise. Flora is the best swimmer in this field. I think the real question is going to be whether Sarah True can possibly hold on to Flora's feet. And I think it would require a really, really exceptional swim from Daniela to do it. But all three of these athletes have short course backgrounds. They were all known as strong swimmers. Vicky, who would you say has the uh, benefit here on the swim? Is any of these athletes significantly faster than each other? Well, I think Ashley has a benefit in that she comes from a short course background, so she understands the importance of a fast start. But Chelsea Sodaro also does know that that will be a massive factor if she can stay on her. And even at this early point here, you can see her really trying to sit on the hip. Laura Phillip, we expect to come out at the back of these three, but she's such a strong biker and runner that her race is absolutely not done. This is back to match one, and we can see that Flora Duffy has taken off. And we can now see as well that Daniela Reef has overtaken Sarah True for second place, just as the match two passed them going the other way. All three of those still locked together. Ashley Gentle from Australia. Just sitting in the, the red cap is Chelsea Sodaro, and in the blue cap, Laura Phillips. So they're much closer than I would have anticipated. Ashley Gentle would have hoped for a little bit more space in this early stage of match two. You have to think that uh, Paula Finley, as she goes immediately ahead of Sky Munch, has probably got to be the swimmer out of this group, yes? 
Yeah, again, another athlete who's come from a short course background, so there is possibly a bit of an advantage there for her. But Kat Matthews has been a really, really fast improving athlete across all three disciplines over the last few years. Laura Duffy now comes underneath the bridge and she'll just be a matter of a last half dozen strokes before she'll be back up on land to the first of the Collins Cup athletes in 2022, the gold medalist Flora Duffy hit shore. Realizes she's got a sizable gap. It is a very long run, however, to get to that transition area. Bermuda was so excited when she won the, uh, won the gold medal last year. Nicola didn't want to get a penalty on her final major race of her career. It's 10 <laughs> seconds if you go early. I think all the women uh, had their feet on the pontoon at the right time. Yeah, she was very, very careful there. And as you just mentioned, Barry, do not be surprised to see Vittoria Lopez get away straight away. You can see how hard she's kicking in these first few meters here. And Sophie Watts doing everything she can to try and hold on to those feet. But Vittoria Lopez was second out of the water at the Olympics. And we really are expecting her to be gone straight away and not seen again by these guys until, well, potentially much later in the matchup. The Olympic Games gold medalist and world champion and Commonwealth Games and probably tiddlywinks as well if you add all the things in her uh, repertoire and skills. Leading right there, that is Flora Duffy by Team International. And you can just see behind, I think that is Daniela Reef, who's not far behind, and we know how powerful that woman is on a bike. Well, that is match two. Another yellow cap for Team International as Ashley Gentle will be very pleased looking over her shoulder with a large gap back to the chase group, which was Chelsea Sodaro and Laura Phillip. Who would you put the money on in the swim here, Vic? I think this is difficult. Last year, we, you know, it's very memorable that we saw both Holly Lawrence and Ellie Soltas do almost exactly what they're doing right now and swim shoulder to shoulder the entire two kilometer distance. Jocelyn McCauley will know that she probably can't quite stick with the likes of these two girls. Holly Lawrence, I would say on paper, is possibly the slightly better swimmer, but the two of them last year at this event swam shoulder to shoulder the whole way. So are we going to see a complete rematch of that and it happen all over again? Well, Daniela was absolutely phenomenal earlier this year, winning her fifth Ironman world title, when a lot of people had potentially written her off, which was a very, very dangerous move. Daniela's gone straight to the front, and Flora has dropped back. This is Paula Finlay here, just about to come out of the water. So in the late stages, she has managed to put a little bit of a gap over Kat Matthews, but not a significant one, definitely not very sizable and not definitive at this point. Well, I definitely don't expect uh, Tamara Jewett to be the first out of the water. I've known her. She actually swims in the, the local group that I'm with, and she was late to getting into triathlon and late to learning to swim, but she's improved massively, no question. As you saw right there, Jackie looked like she had a little bit of a problem just coming off the pontoon. Yeah, I think Jackie got a bit crushed there in between um, both Annie Haug and Tamara Jewett, so she almost had to sit up put her head up and now we can see her swimming wide around those two athletes and on paper you'd have to say that Jackie Herring is possibly going to outswim the other two athletes in this wave but not a great start for her having to sort of pause reset go around everybody and, and start again that's Holly Lawrence of Team Europe with Ellie Salthouse still just about on the feet letting a little bit of a gap go there but I think she's quite happy and comfortable sitting on Holly's feet and it's a much more sensible way to swim than that real shoulder to shoulder or athlete on the hip it just means that the two of them will get away they will get time on Jocelyn McCauley well that is the swim that we thought she would have 26-year-old Brazilian, Vitoria Lopez, out of the water, and it will likely be over a minute. This is wave five, and it might be one of the first waves that the European team have led out of the water with Holly Lawrence, but just on her feet, a great swim by Ellie Seldhaus. Yeah, I think that was the first wave, actually, that we've seen anyone other than Team International lead out the water. So fantastic start for Team International, and they are right together still. Ellie Salthouse hasn't really let Holly Lawrence get any time on her through that whole swim. Well, Holly seemed very motivated in the interviews we had with her this week to be on a team of that significance. I mean, it is not easy. When you looked around the room and saw people like Lucy you know, not there. You saw others like Emma Pallant Brown, who uh, had some bike problems in Edmonton and didn't get selected. I mean, that is a phenomenal group of women who didn't make this team. 
Yeah, it's, it's a tough gig being a, a European athlete at the moment with the likes of Lucy Charles Barkley just coming back from injury. She hadn't done enough racing. She hadn't done any racing this year, unfortunately, to get herself in this team. Emma Pallant-Brown having such bad luck in Edmonton after a string of wins this year. She's won virtually everything she's done. Wasn't able to seal the deal with a good race in Edmonton. And as such, she didn't make it into this team. That's that's Jocelyn McCauley, one minute back. I think that's not a bad swim for her. Just as we see that shot of transition there, Ellie Salthouse has actually overtaken Holly Lawrence. There was a gap of probably five, maybe up to 10 seconds as they ran up to their bikes. But Ellie Salthouse has done a phenomenal job there, really swift and fast through transition, and she will take the first place as they head onto the bikes. Well, as we watch the Olympic gold and silver medalists head out into the lead of her group. That is Nicola Spirig storming to the front in match four. So no shortage of early drama in the women's matchups. Now it was time for the men to take centre stage. First up, Ben Canute, Hayden Wilde, and the big blue himself, world number one, Christian Blumenfeld. Athletes, you're in the hands of the starter. Take your marks. Ben Canoe is going out pretty, pretty strongly here. Again, is what we'd expect, and we just expect these guys just to hold on because all three of them have got such great strength. Well, it's interesting, you know, that you say that. Ben Canute, he's, he's admitted it himself. He's had a very frustrating year this year. Uh, many races that he thought he was going to go well in, with his training has suggested that he would do really well. He actually hasn't had that many great races. He was third at St. Anthony's, but then, you know, he was ninth in Chattanooga, 28th at the uh, Canadian Open a few weeks ago, which is not a good result for, for Ben Canute. On the other hand, we've got Christian Blumenfeld, who has done no wrong. The only chink in his armour was coming second to Gustav a few weeks ago and then Hayden Wild well what a season he's had you know oh so close to getting that Commonwealth Games gold medal only run down in the final meters well yeah like we said it's Olympic champion Ironman world champion Olympic bronze medalist and Ben Canute all going head to head to head here well let's jump back then over to match five here this was the battle between Ellie Salthouse and Holly Lawrence and Holly Lawrence just coming back she had the lead coming out of the swim by six seconds and then Ellie got the better of her in transition and now Holly's saying you know what I'm gonna make this a little bit more hard for you Ellie out there it's a match rematch isn't it of last year which is a great one for all uh, the audience to, to have a little watch of and look, what, we, what we'd like to call this is they're, they're sharing the love out there now. So I don't think that Holly's trying to do anything dramatic here. I think she just wants to take her fair, fair share on the front. These two are very, very evenly matched on the bike. And Holly's doing the right thing. She doesn't want Ellie to be out there all day today. And they know it's in their best interest now to try and put as much time between themselves and Jocelyn McCauley. Now, the reason we want that is because we talk about the points. So it's not just good enough to come first, second or third here. These two women want to get as much of a lead over third place Jocelyn McCauley as they can and then I think once we get to the run then these two there'll be no more sharing sharing the love so to speak anymore and these two will be uh, battling it out on that 18 kilometre run. Well this is right, Sam Laidlow then from Team Europe making his debut here he's the captain pick he's 23 and he's been stirring the pot. He has definitely been stirring the pot. Sam Laidlow, 23 years of age, one of the, the youngest in the field. And yes, he has caused a rather large ruckus this week. Well, here he is, Mr. Yo-Yo-Yo himself, Sam Long from America, the 26-year-old here. Uh, he's excited to prove a point after what's been said earlier on this week. Uh, Mr. No Limits is Mr. Lionel Sanders, 34 years of age. He won, didn't he, the Collins Cup, his matchup last year. He'll be letting those guys get on with it there and just keeping his own game plan very much underway. And did you see the look on Lionel Sanders' face then? I mean, I absolutely love the way that this man races. Always interesting, isn't it? Just to watch the body language there. Sam Laidlow didn't really get into that till 
two, three seconds before, whereas the other guys, Sam Long and, and Lionel Sanders, were very much poised and ready and laid low. He's off. He's got a massive point to prove, and he'll be so nervous after what he said. Well, you know, Sam laid low. He's 23 years of age. He's as cool as a cucumber. He was relaxed then on, on the start line because he knows he is by far, by far the superior swimmer here out of these three. He's uh, one of the best swimmers in the field, whereas on the other hand, we've got Sam Long and Lionel Sanders, who are two of the weakest swimmers in our field here today. Uh, what, we need to, what they need to do now is Sam Long and Lionel Sanders really need to try and stick together and try and limit that deficit, but they must know, they must know that it's going to be a very, very large lead for Sam Laidlow out of the water. That is Daniela Reef, who came storming past Flora Duffy after being about 25 seconds behind her as she came out of the swim. She's now 2.15 ahead. Yeah, I, 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 looking right now, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for Daniela Reef to be beaten. Well, our third matchup for the men's then is coming your way now. That was close. <laughs> we both put our hands up here in commentary. I say we're not falling off our chairs, but those guys almost toppled there into the water. Will that play a part in possibly any penalties there? It was a bit of no. a just ba a balancing act. It was a balancing act. And then you could see once one started to lose their balance, the others followed. And it was still a very, very clean start from all three of our men. Well, let's get back then to the women's matchup. This is match number five. We saw this a little bit earlier, and we think there's been a bit of a, a moment, didn't we, between um, obviously Ellie at Salthouse here and Holly Lawrence. So we have been given reports out on course that Ellie has already received a warning from one of the officials for riding right on the edge of that 20 metres. So we, as we said, that the drafting rules in this race have slightly changed and they are being proactive. So the draft officials are being proactive here. So they are given a warning if it's very, very close. So obviously Ellie was just inside what they deemed to be 20 metres. So they have ridden up beside her and have given her a warning to say, listen, you are really pushing the envelope here. Back it up or next time you'll be given that one minute penalty. Yes, yeah, so they can receive two warnings, can't they, out there as well. Well, maybe that's why she wanted to kind of stay in front there. Let's hope for no wobbles in this one. much smoother there. I thought there was a possible wobble for Patrick Langer there, but not to be. And they're getting out so quickly here, really fighting for every inch in the water. Now we know that Aaron Royal is most definitely the strongest of the swimmers here today. As I said, two-time Olympian. A lot of people think that he's just come from a short course background, but he's actually had a lot more experience over the half distance than what people give him credit for. Sam Laidlow doesn't need any wetsuit. That guy is flying on top of the water. Like, when he comes out, he will have all of the bonus points on both of the athletes. Now, he's taken full advantage of his biggest strength, but what a great swim. Well, this looks like an overtake by the international team right there is a very motivated, young, short course athlete says, I have no respect for these long distance athletes. And the Kiwi is now in the lead. Hayden Wild is taken over from Ben Canute. Hands of the starter. Well, it is the 11th watch. of the waves. <laughs> you have to think that Eden is a swimmer of this bunch, but we've been surprised in a couple of those waves when it's so small, sometimes that faster swimmer doesn't necessarily go as hard as they necessarily could. Yeah, and we've actually seen this year Gustav Eden hasn't been swimming probably as well as he has done in previous years. And he, especially when he stepped down to the short course racing, he's really, really struggled with that. So for him to come out of the water first today, I think he'd be delighted. Jocelyn McCauley, the 35-year-old mother of two, just about to take over the lead. You can see she's gone by Ellie, who's sitting just about 15 to 20 meters back and beside her in the blue outfit. Holly Lawrence, so this is an incredible battle, you know, as we're now well into this bike ride. Yeah, we're not too surprised to see this, maybe a little bit earlier than we thought we might see it, but this is a brilliant, brilliant bike ride so far from Jocelyn, and she's just going to try and get the biggest buffer she can ahead of the run. And as the final match, Becca Gard, Lefferman, and uh, Curry know that the whole Collins Cup might just come down to these athletes. Who do you take in the water here? 
I think for me it has to be Daniel Beckergaard. Um, I feel like he is the strongest of the three, but Braden Curry has put in some really great swims recently, most notably at the Ironman World Championships where he came out pretty much on Daniel Beckergaard's feet. And we looked at earlier on at a couple of other races and the difference between them was only something like six or seven seconds in both. So expect them to be close. Well, taking a look at match 10, not a surprise. Team International? Team International and Aaron Royal, and we mentioned it right at the beginning that this had to be his tactic here today. He knows that his way of toppling the might of the runners like Patrick Langer and Jason West was to get this huge gap out of the swim. And for Aaron Royal, he doesn't want to see any other athlete all day long. And this course, it's basically 40 kilometers down a long, beautiful, flat country road through some little villages, the fields all around. And as they go from left to right to the very end, it's 40 kilometers to a small town of just over 600 people. Reminds me of Javi at the Ironman, where you turn around and have to come all the way back. You'll see your competition on the out and back section. So if someone's having a great day or a terrible day, they'll know where everybody's at at those turnarounds. Well, that is going to probably be the fastest bike of the day. Certainly incredible to have her back in the Daniela we know. She's maximizing virtually the points that she can get out there. Look at 443 to Flora Duffy. That just shows you when Daniela Reef is on her A game, nobody in the world is close to her. Well, that's why she's won 10 world titles in total. You don't win 10 world titles without being an absolute tactical genius. Well, you can see right now the Europeans have moved into a sizable lead. It's still early on, and there's lots of biking and lots of running, but not uh, much different than it was last year. The swims obviously went very well for the international team, but we're seeing the biking prowess of the Europeans. This is Lionel Sanders there, and Sam Long has just overtaken him. You can see him in the top uh, of your screen, and we can't see him at the moment. Sam Laidlow is somewhere out in front. Uh, at the last count, it was about three minutes. Let's see how far away that is. And these two now, they've got to work together if they're to build anything back on Sam Laidlow. Will they be thinking about that? Will they be helping each other? These guys have realised we are not making up any time. We need to get our heads down, butts up, and we need to start working together. And we need to start making this time back up on Sam Laidlaw, and that's exactly what they're doing. We're jumping Matt, to this match up there, match two, and we're about to see Ashley Gentle overtaking Laura Phillip there. She may be just going to sit on her shoulder for a slight while, just say, I'm here. I'm about to pass you and we're about to change from Laura Phillip being the leader to Ashley Gentle as Laura there just uh, throws some water over her head. It's about 24 degrees out there, not as hot as it has been. A couple of days ago, we are approaching maybe the 34, 35 degree mark, which was pretty warm for these athletes. But Ashley Gentle looking in complete control. Well, Paula Finley then. Again, having a great run. She had to settle for second, didn't she, in her home PTO event in Edmonton where she grew up. And, you know, great outing there. She'd like to have got on the top step. But Nicholas Spirig at the moment in that driving seat, five and a half points. I mean, you know, she'd keep pushing. The maximum you can get is six, but five and a half is such a great day at the office. And you can see Sam Laidlow but remember who he's got behind him as he just looks to us. Maybe he can hear us here. He's got Sam Long and Lionel Sanders. He's got now a two-minute gap. So last time we saw them, it was 2.37. So they are closing that down with every kilometre that passes. Well, let's go back to Daniela Reef then. Uh, it's been a pretty long day. She's been out on that course for quite some time now, has Daniela, and making it look pretty easy. 421 to Flora Duffy. That's the gap she's got. I think it would take quite the mistake for Flora to overhaul Daniela now. Well, that straight long line is absolutely perfect opportunity to see. You can see all three men. And what a phenomenal swim Sam Laidlow had today. That was just spectacular. From the first swim stroke, you could tell he was focused. He went off the front as he did in Edmonton. Uh, but he's got some very experienced older men coming up from behind right now. Lionel Sanders now for the first time today 
has moved in the lead, and let's see if Sam Long says anything or just lets his legs do the talking. Yeah, I don't think there were any words past there. What an incredible performance. You are watching the first athlete of the day to make their way across the line. Team Europe is going to absolutely maximize points from Switzerland. She is a five-time Ironman champion, a five-time 70.3 champion, a short course champion, world champion, and she will have an incredible victory for Europe here as Daniela Reef claims maximal points here for Team Europe. Wow. And look at her, she's absolutely spent there. She was loving that final 100 meters or so, grabbing that European flag. Well, we're back to match nine right now. Magnus having an unbelievable ride. When an athlete is that great, they look like they're not even working hard. Yeah, at the moment, Team US are struggling for race victories. It really is a toss-up between Team International and Team Europe. The second of the waves, Ashley Gentle takes win at the Canadian Open and takes a win in wave number two. So as Europe open up in the first wave, it is going to be the international team with Ashley Gentle from Australia claiming victory and now the clock to see what the time gap. But once again, just showcasing what athletes will do to themselves, turn themselves inside out in the name of their region. A faultless display from the legendary Daniela Reef gave Team Europe a perfect start, earning maximum points. While Ashley Gentle's impressive form continued with a hard-fought win over Laura Phillip to give Team International their first W. Match eight here. Back to Sam Laidlow, Sam Long and Lionel Sanders. Sam Long has stolen a march right out of transition. We believe they've only just started the run with Sam Laidlow and Lionel Sanders running together. And the question that we keep asking, has Sam Laidlow actually just kept something back? He really did admit to overbiking in Edmonton and suffering on the run. He had cramps. Now he's running with two of the great runners of our sport and he might just be being tactically a bit smarter today. Team International could be taking the lead as Paula Finley comes in. Yeah, we have heard that she is more than six minutes ahead of both Kat Matthews and Sky Munch, which means the full complement of six points for Paula Finlay. And she's just been in such a great vein of form so far the last couple of months with that performance in Edmonton. All the pressure of a home event, not just a home nation event, but a hometown event for her. She absorbed that and performed incredibly well. And we're going to see her take all the accolades in just a moment's time as she crosses the line. She is enjoying the day and well she should. Had a fantastic swim. The Canadian Time Trial Cycling Championship she won about six weeks ago and it showed the fitness that she had on the bike. She absolutely dominated here over that 80 kilometers and has had one of the better runs of her career. Paula Finley from Team International is going to claim victory and maximal points. The international team going into the lead with Paula Finley's third leg on this race. as we now watch match six. And this is the battle of the runners that we are anticipating, but it is Annie Hag who already has about 75 seconds on Tamara Jewett. And uh, one of the things I was questioning is whether Tamara was overriding and you really have to kind of go for it at this race. She stuck in there, she had a great swim, a fantastic bike, but this woman knows how to get the job done on those long distance races. Nicola Spirig, an absolute legend in this sport approach the end of her 18 kilometer run and she'll have so much support won't she out there this will be the last time we possibly see her racing in international colors here it'll be a real big chance for her to soak up this atmosphere and maybe even a time to reflect on this career so far what she's had at the age of 40. All three of her children are here as well. They've been hanging around. You're obviously good, great friends um, of Nicola. And, and what a race she's put on for the crowds here. Oh, look, she's had an incredible race today. She'll be very, very happy. 
as will Rito, her husband. I used to train with Nicola back in the day, so yep, I've known her for a very long time, and I don't think I've ever met an athlete with a work ethic quite like hers. You know, she's a five-time Olympian, gold medal in London in 2012, silver medal in uh, Rio in 2016. So to see her racing so well here, right at the end of her career, yeah, it, it um, makes me very, very happy. Well, she's very much then on the black carpet here. She's got that Team Europe flag. She waves to the crowd. She, remember, was the captain's pick. This is her debut. And Nicola Spirig is going to take this one in match four. Six points as well, the maximum amount of points as she raises that finish line above her head. And what a smile, what a performance for the lady from Switzerland. We haven't seen many battles kind of playing out like this. And I'm going to say it's a little bit easier. You've got company. You can work together here. And, you know, having a look across isn't Sam. Maybe having a bit of a conversation with Lionel there. You know, maybe they're kind of saying, we're going well here. Let's just keep this up. It's difficult. We just saw Nicholas Spirig out on her own. We saw Ashley Gentle running out on their own. And that's when the mental side of things really comes into play. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, you're out there with your own thoughts and you've, you've got your own battles going on in your head. Part of your, your side of your brain is telling you, you know, you've got this, you feel good. The other side of the, part of the brain is saying, no, I'm starting to get a little tired. It's starting to hurt now. Maybe I can slow down just a smidgen. But as, as we know, if they slow down a smidgen, that's points that they might not get. They need to keep the throttle on all the way to that finish line. As we can see, poor Sam Laidlow has stopped and is struggling through uh, that aid station there. Is this sweet justice for Sam Long? Because, I mean, Sam Long said several times, you know, you know, what, I hope you cramp. Um, I don't know what's going to happen here. It's quite interesting, but wow, I, didn't, I really did not expect this to happen. It's going to be very, very interesting right now when we see this pass. I don't think they'll do anything. I think the boys will just run straight ahead. But you can see Sam Laidlow headlong. He looks very, very dejected right now. Yep, there was nothing. I didn't think there would be. Both Lionel Sanders and Sam Long, they mean business. They're going to run this out. They're going to duke this out all the way to the finish line. Making light work of match number five is Holly Lawrence. As she approaches the black carpet here. Job done for Team Europe, taking some more crucial points here you can see it's currently 50 points to team europe internationals 34 and a half and usa 20.5 but she'll now grab that european flag and she'll be enjoying this moment she didn't enjoy last year she just uh, touches some of those supporters hands i've done it finally redemption from last year as she crosses the line as number one in her matchup Holly Lawrence stops her watch. And again, pretty tired, I'm sure, after receiving that flag from her captain, Natasha Badman, there. Now, I wonder if he's uh, looked across, seen Sam Laidlow walking, and that's just given him all this power. He's probably thinking in his head, now that's karma for you, baby, because he has really picked it up. And to drop someone like Lionel Sanders, that is, that is one mean task. So and to see him actually put this much room into him already, uh, Sam Long means business today. This is Christian Blumenfeld then on the run here in that blue kit of Team Europe. They were the first uh, men's team to go out today and he was up against Ben Canoe and Hayden Wild. We called it the rematch of the Olympic Games, didn't we, from Tokyo when uh, Christian got the better of Hayden in that matchup. And it looks like he's doing the same here. Christian Blumenfeld has a full five minutes over both Hayden Wild and Ben, ben Canute. Aaron Royal up on screen. We know he is leading his match. Not looking like the Aaron Royal that I know and love. I mean, he's still running well, but he's certainly not running. If you compared that, his run form to, say, Christian Blumenfeld, who we just had on screen, you can see that Aaron Royal's probably not running as smoothly as we know he can. But remember, he has been out there on his own, solo, from the time the gun went off. He swum solo, he's ridden solo, and that's the difference that they can make. You know, he's had no company around him whatsoever. 
This is the Annie Haug that we know and love right now. She's a superb runner. 115 over Tamara. I honestly thought that these two athletes would be running side by side, similarly to what we saw with Sam Long and Lionel Sanders. So great racing from uh, Annie Haug today. Great racing here to take her win in this matchup. On the way to Kona as well. And we'll see her out in Hawaii in a couple of weeks' time. But Team Europe are doing the job at the moment. 52 and a half points over 36.5. But Annie Haug just adding to that tally for Team Europe and really enjoying the process and getting to this finish line. Just going to wander over. Yep. Hold that flag up and cruise to a victory in your matchup over Tamara Dewitt and Jackie Herring. Christian Blumenfeld, he is sprinting to the line here as he completes his 18K. He is in full flight now, it looks like, Belinda, as he's really been enjoying this Collins Cup here. The crowd will be loving the fact they get to see, we've mentioned Olympic champion and Ironman world champion. He's really kind of grinning, isn't he? I mean, he doesn't always say he's the best sprinter. I actually watched him on the track, I think it was, on Wednesday night with uh, Gustav Eden and Sam Long. And let me tell you, they look pretty fast to me, even though he kind of downplays his ability at a sprint finish. But he's going to be sprinting in to this black carpet here at the Collins Cup. <laughs> passes Jackie Herring <laughs> right then. Jackie as he does it. Jackie's smiling. Big smile. He's got a lot of uh, fans out there as well. A lot of support. He's more than six minutes ahead in this matchup. He's got to be loving this finale. And, and look, if you just saw in the background then all these fans with the shirts off twirling the round, it was actually Gustav Eden and Christian Blumenfeld who started this trend at the uh, Canadian Open in Edmonton. So great to see the, the men returning the favour back to Christian. They were talking about that in the press conference, weren't they? And look, he's lapping up this crowd here in Bratislava. And rightly so. What a performance he has put on to take maximum points for Team Europe. Six points as he crosses the line here does Christian Blumenfeld in the first matchup for the men. Match seven. So despite some early pressure from the internationals, Team Europe's strength and depth was proving decisive. However, with personal scores to settle, there was still plenty of interest as we approached the business end of the day. Well, this is the box office matchup that we were really excited for, and it's proved to be a great one as well. Sam Long and Lionel Sanders coming in to the arena together here are two men that want to be running at their fastest right now to try and destroy each other with two kilometers left to go and they're on the hardest section of the run course because as i said it is a lot harder running on this grass than it is hard running on the road you just got to match each other's stride at, at this stage and just see who's going to make a break for it first and we're going to be watching each other, aren't we? Sam Long and Lionel Sanders like a hawk here. And while we're watching these two on screen now, we can see out of our window, Ben Canute from Team US has also now crossed that finish line. So great to see Ben Canute also across the finish line. But this is probably going to be the most exciting finish that we're going to see all day long right here. And I am definitely waiting in anticipation. It's going to be a sprint on the black carpet. They are just approaching... The final edge of the grass here and Lionel Sanders puts his foot down and he says, I am going to take the victory in this matchup. Sam, Sam Long, can you come for me? What have you got? And, and, and just look at the face. Look at the face on Lionel Sanders. It is incredible. This is how he races every single time he toes the start line. It is that grimace, that grit, that determination. And look, he has left Sam Long in his wake. There is no other athlete on the planet that gives it this much every single time he races. Well, Lionel Sanders then grits his teeth. He has done it back-to-back -back victories here at the Collins Cup for Team International. 
What a moment for that man. That was the matchup we were all waiting for. And Lionel Sanders delivered four and a half points for Team International. That is going to be crucial. Sam Long there in second place, just a couple of seconds behind. I'm sure he'll be pleased with that matchup, even though he couldn't match Lionel Sanders in the last moment. Well, these are fantastic scenes. What a race. What a matchup we have had uh, in the, the one that everyone was talking about coming into it. And it is valuable points banked by Lionel Sanders. But we saw a little earlier that it was all blue on the left. And these confirmed points are now beginning to accrue what looks a very unassailable lead for Team Europe. Team US are unfortunately not having the day across the board that any of them would have wanted. But it is looking all right on the night. Uh, for, Mag uh, for Norman Stadler and for Natasha Badman and all of the team that they have selected with those still to come home as well uh, Magnus Ditlev leading and looking like a maximum point haul Gustav Eden beginning to ease through the gears and all, his, all the way home to the finish line as well and Daniel Backegaard too looking almost unassailable we're not there yet but Europe have almost got one hand on the trophy What a dominating performance by the 24 year old he had a terrific swim and then an absolutely lethal bike to bring home a ton more points for this 24-year-old as Team Europe continues to pile up the wins. Absolutely cool as a cucumber there as he took the high fives down the finish straight and also the, the hug from team captain there, Norman Stadler. Barely looks like he's been stressed by his efforts today, but more valuable, valuable points there. We're, we're projecting a full six points for Magnus. As we see, <laughs> Sam Laidler, sorry, Daniel Beckergaard there. Daniel, Daniel's the, pipes weren't as big as uh, gave, Blumenfeld's pipes at the finishing line. Nonetheless, yeah. those guys know they've got it in the bag. I think they were out there the, out the out and back. They know that Europe is likely to get the claim, and I think it probably is going to be Gustav coming in to maybe take the official win for the team. Last year it was Daniel Beckengard, who's out in the other direction. So, you know, as we watch here, a very talented man who uh, has spent his career short course, middle distance, long course. Yeah, and you can see Aaron is in a whole world of pain there. He's trying to raise a smile. You can tell he's finding it amusing, but he is very, very deep in the hurt locker. Well, the Australian knew that uh, he had to get the job done in the swim. He did. Fantastic. Solo out of the water. Held on the entire bike ride. The man who's been to the Olympics twice, getting married later on this fall. In fact, uh, his special woman had her fantastic finish with a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games. So what an outstanding way to spend this month as the Aaron Royal non-Stanford uh, combo having just a fantastic month of racing. Oh, they've absolutely rolled with confidence and with success this year. Kicking off with winning the couples championship back in March this year. From that point on, we've seen Aaron's success at Edmonton PTO race, but also again here today winning his matchup for Team International at Collins Cup. And we are seeing the victory for the second time by Team Europe. It yeah. started off with the uh, victory by Daniela Reef, and what a massive victory it was, the full six points, and it's going to be second time victory now for Europe as the man who has not lost, I think, a PTO race, the 27-year-old from Norway, Gustav Eden, will claim victory here for the European team and now the gold medal as he gives the coach a big hug. Yeah, lovely to see that moment as Sam Laidlow actually makes it across the line and goes straight in for a handshake and a hug with Sam Long. To Sam Long's credit, he was right there. As you can see in the background is Lionel Sanders. So we can hopefully think that that rivalry is put to bed. But Gustav Eden crossing the line, taking a maximum six points. There were only two athletes who managed to do that last year himself and Taylor Nibb. So he's backed up again with another maximum six points. And in doing so means that Team Europe are now completely unassailable. They will win the Collins Cup for the second year in a row.
Now we have Daniel Beckergaard just coming onto that black carpet. He was here last year and he won his win last year. Sealed the deal for Team Europe. This year it's already a done deal, but he's going to take home the points again for Team Europe. He was only a captain's pick, such as the strength of the European team, but he's honoured that pick by bringing home a victory. Well, Norman Stadler... Natasha Badman doing a fantastic job of understanding who they needed, athletes who could get the job done, and he did it right from the swim. The man who's been third at the 70.3 Worlds has time to celebrate, pound the chest, and well he should because he is a part of a two-time winning European team. He can enjoy this moment now with Norman Stadler knowing that not only has he done his job but the rest of the team have done theirs too and projected points on screen right now show that he is looking like he's going to take home maximum full six points as he takes a hug there from Natasha Badman. Fantastic result from Daniel Beckergaard. Tell us about some of Team USA's performances today. Well, I think first and foremost... No one came in here and saying, oh, I'm going to have an off day. It's not going to click today. But we had a number of athletes that extended themselves and just didn't have it. And if we could predict the outcome in a three-hour-plus race before the gun goes off, we would have done a lot better. We had some athletes that said it, it was really challenging on the bike with the headwinds coming back. We had a few that got sick. And why? I don't really know why. You know, controlling those variables is always the challenge in the race. And, and they were up for the challenge at the, at the outset. Of course, everyone's going to be up for a challenge at an event like this. Obviously, Sophie Watt, she actually had a DNF in the end. Can you just shed some light on what happened to her, Dave? I saw Sophie uh, just about 4K into the run, and she got up on the levee right next to the Danube. And she seemed okay. She came up the grade and I said, let's go. And just after that, she paused, stopped and started walking. And she was hyperventilating. She said, I, I, you know, I can't get any air. Uh, it's really been difficult. And I was trying to calm her down. Uh, and I think it really it was kind of anxiety ridden. Uh, we all have it. And it kind of manifests at different times. And I think the buildup, for, you know, possibly for Sophie and it all of a sudden just hit on that run and she's a brilliant runner she's magnificent i thought let's go you're still in the game but she just uh i, I think her body shut down well it's a big occasion isn't it this event only comes around once a year and it's kind of a highlight isn't it on the athlete's calendar so i can see why they put such great amount of thoughts into this well dave commiserations this time out but you'll be back stronger next year that's for sure well, we hope so. You know, we want to put a contention together, men and women that are formidable, and Team Europe and the internationals were uh, brilliant at times. Certainly Europe was outstanding. Well, 22 and a half points for Team USA. Thanks for chatting to us, and we'll see you next year. Commiserations to Team US. And unfortunately, from, um, you know, the commiserations to the congratulations trying hard to suppress their smiles. I think it was about 48 hours ago, you stood up at the opening ceremony, you said, we're gonna crush everybody. And lo and behold, you have crushed everybody. How happy a man are you? I am really happy because defending a title is much harder than winning the first one. And I thought on paper, we are the strongest and this year's races will be closer. And, uh, but the first race with Daniela against Flora Duffy was the f very amazing for me or I never thought that Daniela will race like that, and it was like a yeah, start for a good day. Everybody who sets out is a star in their own right, but tell us from your uh, perspective, who were the real heroes today for Team Europe? Who gave you more, perhaps, than you were expecting? Actually, it started with the first heat. We thought the ladies will have, all the ladies will have a pretty hard uh, time on the swim. We didn't expect them to be so close, and each heat was kind of, it was a group of three coming out and so for the, always the next girl seeing that the, the one in front of her performed so well the, the the spirit came over and they all i think they all made incredible things we didn't honestly norman we didn't think that they were that they were so so high ranked coming out of the swim yeah and now it's time for the trophy lift you're getting good at this aren't you who, who takes the bulk of the weight because it's not a small trophy the collins cup it needs the two of us yes uh, ah. <laughs> last year nearly fall down so we 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 are ready now good stuff give us a couple of press ups before we get up there it's a heavy old ton to lift or two well done to both of you congratulations you. to you and your team stellar work well done
Well, I've got Erin Baker here then from Team International. Erin, you're pretty chuffed. You've been giving me some great smiles, even though Team International finished second. 38 points, your tally there, compared to 53 for Team USA. Oh, sorry, for Team uh, Europe. She was asking me these. I've got my paper here. I mean, that's a great day at the office. Four wins as well. Oh, uh, yeah, look, the team did brilliantly. The, the wins are fantastic, but everyone just died on that for this course didn't they they all just put everything into it so yeah give it all to Europe they were amazing but yeah our team did great I mean the box office match up there Lionel Sanders and Sam Long and Lionel there just with that sprint finish he was amazing wasn't he oh, it's amazing I mean uh, they both just you know put themselves in the coffin really but yeah Lionel was fabulous fabulous to see and a word on the girls as well, Ashley Gentle bringing it home, just yep. doing the job after Canada as well. Totally. And, you know, a lot of them had great efforts, you know, even if they didn't win, like, you know, Tamara, she had an incredible race. It's, um, she got second, but what she did in her race was amazing. So, you know, they, um, they did us really, really proud. <laughs> Final confirmation then of the result and a resounding victory for Team Europe as they retain the Collins Cup. Well, at the end of 12 enthralling matchups, once again, we say congratulations, Team Europe, and in doing so, they retain the Collins Cup. Irrespective of the outcome, it's well and truly worth saying that not only is the Collins Cup now here to stay, but with every year, it is getting bigger and better. However, we'll leave the final word and the congratulations to Team Europe. To the rest, better luck next year. And from all of us in Chamarine, it's bye for now.